we're back. <laughs> Just when you thought it was safe to get back on the computer, Jeff and John discussing Diecast. Hello, John. Hello, Jeff. It's uh, been I, a few months. Uh, yes, I think it's been more than a few months. Yes. Like everybody else, we've got caught up in the whole COVID delays and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, I guess we're getting back to normal, that's at least trying to. Yes, and I've noticed you've got a, a red cross on your uh, Th That's on your right. Shirt. I am now fully vaccinated, and I believe you had your first vaccine. I've had my first vaccine, so <laughs> come on, <laughs> don't be shy. <laughs> come nearer to the screen. <laughs> we're safe. No side effects. <laughs> <laughs> we're good. We're good. We're, we're not crazy. But everybody, if you're out there, get a vaccine, because, uh, hey, that's the only way to make this thing go away. So anyways, without any any uh, further delay we want to talk about some of the cool things that we have in the works and um, I think I'll give it over to my British counterpart Sir John Spencer what are you talking about today sir well I do have a British section today and I'm going to start with this Boeing 747 um, British Airways obviously British, uh, British Airways their headquarters is in London, believe it or not. Very near to Why wouldn't I believe that British Airways is headquartered in London? Well, it could be anywhere in England, but oh. it is actually near okay. to uh, Heathrow Airport. Okay, that's the big airport. The biggest airport in England, yes. Okay. Well, why did you pick the 747 to talk about? I picked the 747 because it was, it, well, it was created in 1974, and now they're phasing the 747s out. Um, and also, they do a 747F as well, which is the freight version. Right, but I think British Airways has retired all their 747s. They have retired them, That's yes. a result of COVID and, of course, the drop in, in passenger numbers. And believe it or not, I have actually flown on this plane. Well, not this exact plane, but... Uh, well, we don't know that. Maybe. Well, if you look carefully, you may see me waving Why at Why don't the, you tell people window. what a great flyer you are? That it only takes about a, two bottles of tequila, <coughs> some Xanax... We were and, keep uh, it, keeping that quiet. So uh, right. if yeah. he could come across from England by boat, he would. But uh, actually, anyways. if I could drive, it'd be a lot safer. Okay. Well, you could, but I, I don't think you'll get very far. You're about five five feet off the coast and then down. But anyways, that's good. So that uh, is from uh, which uh, company? Well, this is made by Phoenix, and it's a one four hundred scale. Um, we are carrying a lot more one four hundred planes these days. So if any of you guys out there are into airplanes as well check out our section. We will also be bringing in a new line called NG models. Uh, we should be arriving in about two weeks and we have about uh, 15 new 1-400 scale planes that are coming in. Really cool stuff. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, uh, the 747 started flying in 1989. British Airways was created in 1974. They combined BOAC and BEA, which were the two major airlines. Uh, British European Airways was BEA, and British Overseas Airways Corporation was BOAC. I mean, these planes are very highly detailed, even down to the landing gear. You can see all the wheels, um, and it actually rolls across. So if you're building a little airport, you can actually roll your planes across. Like Brian. Uh, yes, like Brian. One if Captain Brian is out there, <laughs> we're talking about you. <laughs> I don't one of our special customers. And I don't think he's, he's actually bought this plane. Okay, not yet anyways. Not yet. When he, next time he comes in, I'm sure you'll, you'll sink your teeth into him. All right, that's cool. So how much is that again, you said? This is made by Phoenix and it's $69.95. All die cast metal and of course comes in its own beautiful box. And you know, 747s have pretty much, pretty much been retired in almost every major airline out there. So while you can still get models of them, I mean, I think that's quite a unique piece to add to any aviation collection. So, all right, cool, what's next? Uh, I think it's your turn next. My turn, okay. Well, what I wanna talk about is, um, those of you bus guys out there, um, we released the uh, MCI MC9, a 1980 MC9 in 187 scale. And um, the bus was probably one of the most popular MCI buses ever made. They had some 6,500 that were produced over the run. And, uh, you know, of course, Greyhound, big users, and uh, so many different charter companies. But the very first MCI, Motor Coach Industries MC9, that came out was sold to a company called Allstate Charter Lines in Fresno, California. And uh, no mistaking this bus for a Greyhound, it uh, has a very striking pink color, which uh, back then they used uh, the Pink Panther Pink, which is a very unique color that Dodge used on some of their Challengers. But uh, certainly on the bus, uh, 
wow, when this thing went by, it was a real head turner. So if you're looking for the very first MCI MC9 that ever came out, number one, that is the Allstate Charter Lines. And of course, most people didn't know that. Um, at this point, we've pretty much sold out of every MCI MC9. We have a few left of these, not that many. And uh, we do have uh, two that are arriving. They missed the last container, but they'll be here. Um, actually, they're here now. And um, one blank, so if you want to make your own uh, graphics. And then, of course, Voyageur, which is a big company, uh, Voyageur Colonial in uh, uh, Montreal, Quebec, that kind of thing, up in eastern Canada. So the MCIs have done extremely well. We got a great amount of positive feedback from collectors. We thank you for that. We are already working on the second run. Um, to be determined the details but uh, suffice it to say there's about eight new liveries that will be coming out in the MC9 so um, if you can get one while you can um, these are all die-cast metal and um, I just think uh, great buzz what do you, do you agree or I think that pink one is so striking it's un unbelievable yeah yeah I don't think people realize that it was the number one MCI that came off the production line so long before any Greyhounds or anything else, it was Allstate. So um, anyways, you can still get one. Check it out, $39.95 from Iconic Replicas. All right, next. My next choice is this 118 scale Formula One Mercedes by Barago. Now, this is the number 44 car, which is actually driven by Lewis Hamilton. Ah, another fellow Brit. Another fellow Brit. Uh, <laughs> actually not that far away from me in a place called Hertfordshire. Well, Stevenage in Hertfordshire. In 1986, he was born, which makes him 36 years old. And for a 36-year-old driver, he's had a record 96 wins. He's been... In, in what? In... in Formula One. Okay. He's been in the pole position, which is right at the front of the race, uh, 99 times. And he has shared the podium 167 times. Wow, that's pretty phenomenal. Now, that's a beautiful car. That's a Mercedes? That's the Mercedes. It has the steerable front wheels. Again, very highly detailed. But uh, not expensive. No, not for this car. This is by Barago, and it's only $89.95. But when you look at the detail, even down to the Pirelli on the on the tires, mm. it's uh, an un unbelievable car. Wow, they have them strapped in there. So you actually have Lewis Hamilton sitting Lewis in the Hamilton car. Lewis Hamilton is sitting there. And the helmet is fully imprinted, too, with all sorts of logos. Yeah, and, and you can kind of see the, the, the steering wheel is uh, also again fully detailed wow I mean this really is a stunning I remember stunning reading piece. somewhere that these guys actually go through a pair of driving gloves every race because they shift gears and it's done on the steering wheel they shift gears so many times during the whatever hundred mile race or whatever it is that they actually wear holes in the lining of the gloves so pretty impressive that this guy has been such a winning driver to, to be close to a hundred wins I mean is phenomenal because Formula One is ultra ultra competitive and when you consider they're doing it, what, at 200 miles an hour in rain and whatever, it just uh, that's just unbelievable. So if you're into racing cars, um, I think that's this, a good yeah, one. Yeah, this is a nice piece. There are, we have got some other Ferraris as well. Okay. Um, so if you're a collector of Formula One, look out for those. Yeah, we're well. starting to get into that. And we also have uh, figurines too. For we have uh, the pit crew. Um, they change the tires. So there's a set of about seven, seven people. Mm -hmm. So uh, make it, a nice display. Yeah, they put them all around the car. Okay, awesome. Good stuff. All right. Thank you very much. Um, the next bus I want to talk about is actually an Airbus. <laughs> Focus, focus. Oh, look, <laughs> here it is again, <laughs> intact. So anyways, I wanted to talk about this Airbus, which is uh, nicknamed the Beluga. And it's, uh, it's a one 200 scale Gemini jets that we just got in. They're $129.95. This is the plane that they use to carry fuselages, uh, helicopters, uh, parts to build Airbus planes. And uh, it's actually made from an A300-600 which is your average uh, jetliner, but they've adapted it to uh, the whole nose cone here opens up so they can put giant pieces in and fly them around um, the okay. payload on this plane. It looks like a whale. With well, that, that's and... where they get the name is Beluga. You can see it. They actually put the eyes here and it's supposed to look like a Beluga whale, which actually it does. And um, these planes are about $284 million each. Uh, there's just a couple of them that fly for Airbus and they have a payload a little over 110,000 pounds. So that's about 30 of your average size American sedan. So a pretty cool piece. It comes with the uh, undercarriage, the wheels, uh, as well as a display stand. 
So if you're looking for a really unique airplane, um, this one here at $129.95 is uh, very well priced, all die cast metal. Does the front open up so you can load? Well, or? this this piece actually does, uh, I can't do it with my gloves, but the piece actually comes out. Right, right. And they have a display piece that you can do with the open section. So if you want to display it with the top of the plane open, you can do that. So. Just uh, search Beluga on the website and this airplane, this one 200 scale plane will come right up. Let's put this one here so I don't drop this one. <laughs> of course, I don't drop the cheap item. I have to drop the $129 plane, but anyways, no worries. $129.95. Oh, okay, you have to throw that in there. Thank you. You, you can't forget 95 cents. Okay, all right, cool. All right, what's next for you? My last piece is this. 118 scale little, little mini cooper and when i saw this i thought like, what in the world it's got the union jack on the roof it has it on the mirrors does that make you homesick when you see stuff like that not really because um, i come into the warehouse and i see you tearing up and is that because of the car or i think that's something in the air that's giving me a little bit of an itch okay um, a little sentimentality but... no but it is a it's a very highly detailed piece now the mini was actually first made in 1959 mm -hmm. and it carried on going until the year 2000 and they had many variations um, but now uh, doesn't BMW make a mini now BMW uh, uh, started to own them in 2000 they took over in oh. 2000 but this original one here is actually got now these wheels were called mini light wheels believe it or not and they actually steer and the doors open and you see a, a nice detailed interior with a wooden dashboard who made this this is made by Salido out of France okay um, and it is a rare being in this this is a rare color this fish uh, fishman blue it's called okay and it's 139.95 very hard to get hold of this particular with the model. Union Jack on the roof there that's pretty that's neat. it in fact when uh, they first came out they were owned by British Leyland and then Rover took them over and you can see in the back window it has a little Rover Rover, Rover sticker um, oh. on the back window there. That's cool. I wonder if the Queen drives a car like this. You know, when she goes out to the supermarket or something. Incognito with sunglasses on. Okay, there goes Queen Elizabeth in her mini. But uh, no, that is one of the uh, the longest surviving cars, and they did make many variations. But now they're called uh, like Countrymen. They have like station wagons. They're well, not they, so mini anymore. No, they had the Countrymen even in England. They actually made one called a Mini Clubman, and right. they had also the back doors open, the barn doors, and it had the wood down the side. Mm -hmm. um, and they were called the Countrymen as well. And for those of you out there who don't know this, Dave, one of our other customers, is an avid mini collector, right down to having his own real mini. And he loves to come here and buy minis. So uh, right. he's, he's actually got a right-hand drive English mini, a pickup, which is very rare. And he's trying to get uh, Hot Wheels to make it. So he's, he's campaigning. It's a pretty beautiful car. And uh, Dave, if you're out there, good luck. Hopefully one day we'll be selling your car in Diecast. So and if you do come in, we'll give you one on the house. We won't even charge well, you that, for that's, it. That's pretty big of you. <laughs> All right. Well, the next thing I want to talk about is the long-awaited. It's been several months that we've been delayed. COVID has really just played havoc on shipping, on production. Um, it's just one thing after another. But we are happy to say that the Dina Olympicos in 143 scale are now in stock and shipping. So uh, this is one of the first Mexican diecast buses that we have produced. And it is just stunning in 143 scale. Um, you can see the detail on this bus right down to the positional front wheels. We did six different liveries and great graphics. We really researched this with a couple of, you know, real um, experts. Um, you know, Juan, who's out in Colorado, and Louie, who's in LA, and, uh, you know, Josh, who's also in LA. These guys are like crazy for Dina, and they just went through the blueprints to make sure that we got this bus spot on. So, um, happy to be releasing these. They're $119.95, 143, all die cast metal with full interiors, tinted green windows, very, very nice. And uh, we even did um, a version of the Flexible, which is where this license came from. Dina purchased the license from Flexible, and uh, which was a bus manufacturer in the States. And um, they, uh, it was the Flix liner, and they kind of conformed it to what became known as the Dina Olympico. And why Olympico? Because it was released in 1968 to coincide with the 19th Olympic Games in Mexico City. 
And uh, I mean, to this day, Dina is probably 20 or 25% of every bus and truck in Mexico. So extremely popular. And from the 60s right up until the late 80s, these buses were produced. So, you know, Mexican uh, clients of ours are just falling over themselves buying these, very excited. All limited edition pieces of 504 each. And once we sell out, we sell out. And we are already well over 70% pre-sold. So if you're interested in one of these buses, um, the American version is actually $99.95, a little bit less expensive, but uh, the uh, Mexican ones are $119.95 and just beautiful. So, um, you know, check them out. Just look up Dina on the website and uh, you'll see all six versions that are available for purchase. They're actually really nice, aren't they? Yeah. I can see these selling out really quick. Yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree. So, you know, um, I even have my cup of, uh, well, it's not coffee, but it's uh, another very famous Mexican drink. And uh, all I can say is, uh, I don't know, how do you say cheers in Mex in Spanish? I don't know, but you don't want to drink too much of that before you Corona? drop something else. Uh, dos Exis, Modelo, I don't even know. How, how do you say cheers in Mexican, Spanish? Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> That's terrible. We should know this. I'm sure people will be commenting uh, yeah. in the comments below. Yes, please let us know yeah. how to say cheers in Spanish. Por favor. That I know. So anyways. All right. Well, that's about it. Um, a couple of small uh, after tidbits. Um, we have four buses in various stages of production right now from development to actual production. Uh, the next to release will be the Proterra ZX-5 in 187 scale. We've got a number of cities. This is an all-electric bus. Beautiful bus, very futuristic looking, and I'm sure coming to a city near you one of these days. And we also, for those of you who like vintage buses, have the uh, 1999 TMC RTS transit bus. This is uh, kind of what they look like when we get our samples from the factory. So we can do last minute, you know, verification of windows and wheels and whatnot. But once they're painted, it just, you know, you can't even tell that, you know, certain parts of the bus are in plastic. Everything else is die cast. So these will also release probably in uh, late July, early August. The Proteras we're hoping will be sometime in uh, June, but please don't quote us. We do the best we can to estimate when these uh, vehicles will be released. But because of the huge amounts of delays in shipping and you know all the issues in the world these days, they come when they come. So um, all you have to know is if you place your order, you are guaranteed to get one. So please make sure to go online. And uh, when they are ready, we will let you guys know on the Model Bus fan page that uh, they're ready for order. So that's uh, basically it for me today. Are you uh, good? Anything um, else? No, I'm all done now. All done. Uh, at least I didn't have any mishaps today. All right, well, that's today. That was my <laughs> fault, but hey, I own the company, so what am I gonna do, fire myself? It is what it is, no big deal. So I'm there, I guess, just, I, we're, we're good, right? We're good? Yeah, Robin, we're good. we're good? Okay, Robin says we're good, and so uh, thank you very much. Oh my God, the crowd's here, it's insane. <laughs> But thanks for being an awesome customer. We truly appreciate your business, especially in this very difficult time. And uh, we look forward to bringing you lots of uh, fun and exciting new models in the next few months. Until then, talk to you soon. Cheerio.